it, it should be okay. Um, the the more the less distraction in the background, the better. So that wall behind you that is plain. Yeah, is better. It's it's better just to okay. yeah okay. like yeah. that. Yes, it is better okay. without too much background. Okay. And you can see me okay. I can see you clearly. Yes, okay. I can see you clearly. I, uh, now it says here, this was an error loading. There was an error loading your app. Uh, there was an error loading your app. Yeah, but you can see, don't you? You can see my. I can yeah. see your video, but it's flicking in and out. Maybe that's what the error is. Does it tell you how to resolve the error? If you uh, just say something to me. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. No, I think we should be fine. Let Let's just record it. It's coming through okay. Yeah, your your video bounces a little bit also, but. Um, All right, I'm um, going to just start off with an introduction. Yeah, sure. And okay. Then you'll just have an informal catch up chat and talk about your book. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Hello and welcome back to the Italian Book Club. This is Gertrude Mache. Today I am based in Alabama, USA, and I am going to be interviewing an Italian author by the name of Ernesto Ciroli. Ernesto, welcome to the Italian Book Club, and thank you so much for this interview. What a very strange thing to do. It's an Italian book, book club. You are in Alabama. I'm in California. Uh, you're from Zimbabwe. <laughs> fantastic. So thank you very much for thinking of me, Gertrude. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm really excited to be able to to share you with our audience. Um, I'd love us just to talk about your first book yes. and some of your experiences when you worked in my part of the world, in the yeah. Zambezi. Yeah. Um, tell us the title of the book first and what inspired you to write the book. The title of the book is Ripples from the Zambezi, um, Passion, Entrepreneurship, and the Rebirth of the Local Economy. Um, and my uh, title was inspired uh, by um, a story that happened to me when I first, as a very young man, uh, worked in Africa in uh, 71. I was a young um, uh, volunteer working for an Italian NGO. I was working out of Rome. We we did this first project in Zambia, in southern Zambia, and um, uh, it was uh, an extraordinary experience for me uh, because of the disaster that uh, happened there and was an absolute um, unmitigated disaster was the story of uh, us Italians uh, convinced that we uh, knew more than the African people about uh, agriculture and we uh, established uh, a training farm to teach uh, Zambian people how to grow uh, horticulture uh, uh, produce, uh, tomatoes yes. and zucchini and Italian. We had all these beautiful Italian seeds and we thought we were so smart and the place was so fertile and was this beautiful uh, farm by the Zambezi River. And we planted all these tomatoes and of course as soon as the tomatoes were nice and ripe, uh, the hippos came out of the river and they ate all the tomatoes and only then we uh, understood that uh, why the Zambian people were laughing at us so much. Uh, they laughed at us because we arrived with, with the arrogance of, uh, you know, the, the white man who was going to teach the local people something, uh, <laughs> but we knew nothing about the local conditions. And uh, now, our project was a total disaster. I, I, I'm going to just stop you there because the way that I met you was through your TEDx video called, If You Want to Help Someone, Shut Listen. Yeah. 
shut that um, up. Yeah, so for all of our listeners, you have got to watch this TED video. Um, just go online and watch it and learn some of the insights that Ernesto actually got out of that experience. So, so based on that TED talk, please elaborate what were the learnings what, for you? Yeah, what has happened to me was that um, um, I thought that that first mistake in Africa was really uh, never to be repeated again, that f the next time we will never plant a crop by a river full of hippos. But it wasn't uh, the case at all. We discovered that uh, for the next five or six years in Kenya, in uh, uh, Ivory Coast, in Algeria, in uh, Somalia, we constantly made mistakes. In fact, not only we Italians made mistakes, but in those uh, five or six years in Africa, I met the French, the English, the Canadians, the Americans, and we were all blundering in Africa. It was all, not only us Italians. And the reason why we were blundering in Africa was because we never listened, never responded to local people. Our projects were always conceived in our capital cities and yes. we white people are incredibly arrogant. We are so arrogant that we cannot even see it. <laughs> our arrogance is in the marrow of our bones uh, and uh, our culture. We are imperialist, colonialist and missionaries and we white people only treat people who are different from us um, we using two different approaches. Either yes. we patronize them or we are paternalistic. And I, uh, uh, for the Italian book club, they will appreciate that the two words, patronizing and paternalistic, come from the Latin word pater, which means father, yes. but in the, they have two different meanings. In, uh, for paternalistic, it means that we treat everybody <clears throat> from another culture, from another uh, uh, ethnicity, uh, as if they were our children. So we yes. go to Africa with this yeah. idea that uh, you know every African person, because they're black, they're good, and so they are. We love them so much with, without appreciating that there are good African people, bad African people, people who will kill yes. you, rob you. There is nothing about race that should be um, uh, so uh, make us behave in such a paternalistic way. Now, all <laughs> but then I guess I guess it goes children. to the fact that. Um, most people do tend to stereotype exactly. and make exactly. assumptions exactly. about people. Exactly. So we are going to Africa and just before, even before coming, we have made a decision that all the African people are good people and we love them so much. And so we love <laughs> them like children, you know. And these African yes. people who are wiser than us, older than us, the, 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 the local chief <laughs> with uh, 15 wives, 130 children who has been in, in 10 horrible uh, uh, wars and, 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 and terrible you know, experiences uh, are patronized by a 20 year old Italian kid. Doesn't make any <laughs> sense. He should patronize me. You see what I mean? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So, so what, what would be your advice for someone who means well? Because I'm pretty sure when you went, you went out to Africa, you wanted to do some good. What is your advice to anybody who has a good heart, who feels they want to try and make a difference well, in Africa? First of all, first of all uh, let me tell you the difference between, so patronizing everybody is like our children, so we treat everybody, you know, with the kind of uh, uh, do-gooder, uh, nonsensical, naive, and but also incredibly 
kind of uh, presumptuous way that you know they are like children to us. Yes. But the other thing is worse is co is that patronizing. Patronizing actually <laughs> to treat everybody as yes. they are your subjects, your employees, your inferior. And that's why in Africa, in some, uh, uh, as you well know, in some part of Africa, the white people are called Buana, and Buana means boss. How dare! Yes. Who's Twenty years old, <laughs> who has never done anything <laughs> in his own country, gets called boss by uh, hard-working men and women with much more experience and much more uh, everything. Courage, experience. Uh, uh, they have been there uh, doing it in a for, in a very very hard way, beautifully forever, and they call me boss. I know nothing. So my <laughs> point is, we have to stop this uh, presumption of being superior, to be better, to be uh, because we come from a country that uh, we believe has uh, some sort of technological uh, or commercial advantage, advantage over yes. the countries that we go and see. Uh, what I uh, have been teaching for the last uh, 30 years, since my uh, six, seven years in Africa, I went to do my PhD, uh, first in Africa, then in Australia, and I have developed a completely different uh, way of working. You only now, your, your way of working is extremely unique. I mean, I, you and I have had some really in-depth conversations around what you're doing now. And um, what I love about your enterprise facilitation program is that, again, you are not going into these communities or into these countries um, wanting to to do good. Um, what I hear from you is that you take time to listen people's dreams, to listen to their vision of what they want for themselves and for their families. Can you just elaborate a little bit yeah. more about how you're working now? Yes. Um, uh, the consequences of my negative experiences in Africa made me think of another way of working. And the other way of working is that you never, ever, ever show up uninvited anywhere. Uh, you wait to be invited and when you are invited you arrive, you sit with the elders and uh, you, you win the trust and uh, uh, you set up uh, a, uh, a responsive uh, person in the community, it's a local, you train the person to become an enterprise facilitator and the enterprise facilitator never initiates any projects, never motivates anybody responds to self-motivated, passionate people who have an idea of how to feed themselves, how to feed their families. Yes. And what you then do, you become engaged with this individual one-on-one -on -one for as long as it takes, and you help transform these uh, dozens, these hundreds of individual ideas in a community into ways for all those people to transform their own lives and the beauty of our projects in Africa now is that we have an enterprise facilitator who in the first 24 months has been approached by 2,000 local people. Out of those 2,000 local people, he has helped to start 187 businesses employing 750 people and without any money whatsoever because we use a very, uh, a very strong uh, methodology on uh, uh, re regarding entrepreneurial development. We now, have now what I what I remember from the conversation we had because I, I had told you about some of my projects and how I was trying to initiate uh, a microloan program, which yes. is very limiting in a sense because I'm constantly having to try and raise the money that I can give out as microloans and then getting the money back and it gets very very complicated. Your model, your system is so unique in the sense that it can be done without money. Can you elaborate how you came up with this idea and, and how it all works? Okay, um, let, let's uh, give you an example. The, uh, our example in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, in the DRC, we yes. have uh, three enterprise facilitators in three different communities. Uh, 
yeah. but everything started with one enterprise facilitator. The first enterprise okay. facilitator was uh, uh, the, uh, is paid in local currency, uh, so it <clears throat> so yes. in, in terms of for. Uh, Western standards is a very, very, very small amount of money, but for Congolese uh, um, uh, salary is a very high salary. We're talking about three hundred dollars American a month for yes. the salary of the facilitator. This money <laughs> has been raised by two or three different uh, foundations and sources, so it's five thousand dollars a year for the salary of the facilitator. The facilitator is a local was uh, selected in the village, was uh, trained by us, and the enterprise facilitator then um, is the only full-time paid operator in that community. He is surrounded by a group of volunteers, and they all sworn to secrecy. They, they are not going to reveal the client uh, uh, business idea. And yes. the spread facilitator is introduced in the community by the volunteers, so the enterprise facilitator does not need to have uh, uh, brochures or um, uh, advertising. Uh, it's all done through the volunteers and, and word of mouth. Okay, so word of mouth. So confidentiality word. is a crucial part of the situation because entrepreneurs never come to public meetings. Yes, and entrepreneurs never tell during a public meeting what they want to do with their own money because yes. they're scared that people will steal the idea. So yeah. the price facilitator uh, works, uh, tells everybody that uh, what they tell him is confidential or her yes. is confidential. And then the enterprise facilitator is introduced to the community and when he's introduced to the community then um, he or she uh, has no office, uh, <coughs> walks to the house of people, uh, walks to the place where these people are working and say, why did you call me? Well, did yes. I call you because my auntie is on your volunteer panel. She told me that you help people to start businesses and I have this uh, uh, farm and I, I, and I have uh, chicken, but uh, I'm, I need to make more money. Uh, yeah. The chicken that I'm selling now, I'm making very... Uh, and uh, so the facilitator says, okay, tell me the story. Well, the story is that I have a farm, I'm breeding chicken, but I cannot go leave the farm and go and sell the chicken because if I leave the farm, people will steal my chicken. Also, there are no banks here, so the money is under the mattress, and if I leave the farm, somebody's going to rob, rob me. So mm -hmm. I can only sell the chicken when people come and get it. But yeah. I'm away from the, the, the town, from the market, and yes. so I have a limited market. So the enterprise facilitator does a little drawing, and the drawing is uh, a smiling face of the woman at the top, and yes. there's three boxes. And the box, one of the boxes is products, one of the boxes is marketing, one of the boxes is financial management, yes. and the facilitator says to the client, what can you do? What do you love to do? And she says, so so like you're really you're business. really helping people to zone into what they are good at doing their yeah. little specialty area because not everybody yeah. can sell not everybody can produce the product not everybody can market that's the secret the secret is then we say to people who is doing your marketing and yes. the woman said I don't have anybody taking uh, doing my marketing what do you mean yes well, what you mean is that why don't you have somebody taking 12 chicken every day in, on a bicycle to the central farmer's market. To sell. And yes. she said, because I don't have the money to pay the person, and the facilitator said, this is a true story, the facilitator <laughs> said to her, do you have somebody that you trust who has a right. bicycle who can take 12 live chicken to the central farmer's market every day? If they don't sell, they will bring them back alive, so you're not going to lose the chicken. Yes. And do you know somebody that you trust with your chicken that you can pay 20% of the of, cost of, of that? Of the cost of the, yes. And the person said, I didn't ever knew that you could do that. <laughs> and he said, well, this is called commission sales. Yes. I never knew that. 
And she said, yes, let's, I, let's, I have um, my nephew. My nephew can do that. He has a bicycle. He's young. He's looking for money. And he would love to go to the farmer's market with 12 chicken every day, sell it. And then yes. I give him some money. He said, okay. Now he actually you show people how to, to look at the existing resources around them in, in order to solve these problems. I just want us to go back to your book. Yes. Who should read your book? Who is this book geared at? Anybody who, was, who wants to go to, before going to Africa or Latin America, before wanting to do anything good, read my book. Because once you read my book, you will change completely your approach. You, yes. Because once you read my book, you understand that the people that you are going to meet in Africa are, are smarter than you, even they are maybe even as smart as you, maybe they're even smarter than you, they mm -hmm. being there, they know the conditions, they know the culture, they know the trading uh, ways. The only thing they need is somebody who is there that they can trust, they can talk to, yes. and you could have a completely ph phenomenal experience in Africa if instead of arriving in Africa with the idea and the project, you would arrive with this uh, understanding that first you have to make friends, yes. you have to understand the language, you have to uh, become trusted, and once you yes. are trusted and you don't talk all the time, you are going to have the time and the ability to respond to local people who you have befriended. Now yes. they will tell you what their dreams are. And now you become a facilitator instead of an obnoxious white person yet again arriving in Africa to tell the African people what. <laughs> All right, so when any people fail. buy this book, Ernesto, where can people buy the book? I know that it's on Amazon. Amazon. I also want Amazon, people to know your, your website. Even Amazon, uh, so many uh, online uh, booksellers, they have it. I discovered that even Walmart books <laughs> was selling my <laughs> Look, uh, it's online, it's easy to find, it's been uh, in print since 1995, it's yes. never gone out of print, it's been adopted by a very large numbers of universities around the world, uh, yes. a university that are teaching community development. Because ultimately my book has to do with how do you truly support local economic development, one passionate person at a time? Because yes. if you look at in the, in the reality is that in every community there are examples of successful entrepreneurs. And when you <laughs> yes. ask them how they started, they will tell you that nobody believed them, uh, that people laughed at them, they started with no yes. money, and and yet they made it. So why don't we set up a system yeah. where we multiply the chances for people to come and talk to us? And support them. And, and support it's them. It's about getting that support. And you get them to form little teams. Remember, nobody ever has been born that can make it, sell it, and look after the money. We all have self no. businesses. We all have characters that yes. get us to prefer certain things. And so why don't we do beautifully what we love, but we surround ourselves with people who can do what we hate. Let's yes. go Steve. <laughs> you see, Steve Jobs would have never uh, set up Apple's without Bosniak. Bill Gates would have never set up Microsoft without Allen. Uh, uh, yes. Henry Ford would have never set up the Ford factory without his financial manager that was James Cousins. And if you read the books yeah. of successful entrepreneurs, you always find out that there are more than one person necessary to start and run a successful, successful company. business. So let's take yeah. this knowledge in yeah. blue jeans at the grassroots in Africa, in the, in the villages in Africa. Let's take this methodology into the villages of uh, Latin America. Let's take this message to the kids in Italy, in southern Italy now. Yes. They are unemployed, they have ideas for businesses, and they are totally lost. They're lost. They're lost. Now, you know that I'm going to Rome on the 26th of March to launch my book in Rome. 
I would like to finish this interview with you saying something in Italian to the audience because I would love to play this video um, during the book launch as well, just to inspire those Italian people who are struggling at the moment, who have brilliant ideas. Uh, can you just finish off vorrei, this uh, vorrei, interview uh, with some words? Vorrei ringraziare uh, gli amici italiani, gli amici di, di uh, Get Root uh, per questa occasione eccezionale. Uh, eh, Get Root è una, una di queste forze di natura, è una, una donna con delle capacità incredibili e, uh, e spero che voi uh, veramente abbiate la possibilità di conoscere uh, Get Root e capire che tipo di persona lei, uh, lei sia. Uh, dal punto di vista nostro, del nostro lavoro, abbiamo adesso uh, dei colleghi italiani interessatissimi al nostro discorso della facilitazione del, delle imprese e uh, molto presto noi avremo un ufficio in Italia e, vi, e se siete interessati uh, mettetevi in contatto con noi, il nostro uh, contatto è uh, ernestochiocciolasirolli.com mettetevi in contatto e uh, speriamo di incontrarci di persona Uh, a Roma. La mia prima laurea è alla Sapienza, quindi la mia laurea è in politico, politico, scienze politiche alla Sapienza, il mio, uh, la, il mio dottorato invece fu fatto sia in Africa che in Australia. Vi ringrazio, eh, siete stati molto gentili ad ascoltare. Arrivederci. That's it. Fantastic. Thank <laughs> you so much. I said something nice about you. Get <laughs> Thank you, and I really want to thank Dr. Federico Conforto for giving me this opportunity to be the host for the Italian Club. I'll be doing several of these interviews, and Ernesto, if you know any other authors, any Italian authors in specific I can interview, I would really appreciate you um, sending me those referrals so that uh, I, I, um, somebody, I can I find a way to one. really grow the following online Italian book club. I have somebody of Italian background ready for you. Thank so you so I, much. I will, I will pass on some contacts to you, okay? Thank you. Thank you so bye much bye. for this interview. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye, get through. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. Bye.